Show on the road. Let's set you up here, shall we, Cammy? Perfect. Hey, everyone. We're gonna talk about. No me gusta esto. Like a one of these, you know. Hello. So I think that I want to talk about shame and guilt. Shame and guilt are things that often make us feel bad about ourselves, but there's a difference. There's actually a key difference between guilt and shame that my therapist talked about. So. Guilt is something you feel when you did something that goes against your values and some things that you believe in, so your morals. Shame is something you feel when you feel that you're going against somebody else's values, what other, what society might think is right or wrong. Um, so you feel shame because uh, you're, and I think that's right, wait. Let's look at Brene Brown's definition of both. She's the expert. So Brene Brown believes that guilt is adaptive and helpful. It's holding something we've done or failed to do up against our values and feeling psychological discomfort. I define shame as the intensely painful feeling or experience of believing that we are flawed and therefore unworthy of love and belonging. Something we've experienced done or failed to do makes us unworthy of connection. I don't believe shame is helpful or productive. In fact, I think shame is more likely to be the source of destructive, hurtful behavior then the solution or cure, I think the fear of disconnection makes us dangerous. And I, and I feel the same way. I feel that guilt um, oftentimes makes us, you know, apologize or take note of our actions um, because it's it's gone against something that we believe is wrong um, and makes us kind of reevaluate our actions. But shame is something that we bring onto ourselves because we think it's more about how we see ourselves with respect to others. I think a lot of people say, oh, I'm just, I carry a lot of guilt. But it's not, I think it, people, what people really carry with them when they feel like their past is haunting them is shame. Because the shame piece is what makes us feel, like Brene Brown said, unworthy of connecting with others, unworthy of being liked and loved by other people. And shame really comes from this feeling that we've like let other people down. I think shame, doesn't let us actually grow and move on. I think shame can keep us in that state of, Ugh, I'm, I'm a shitty person. I don't really deserve people's approval. And so shame really kind of keeps us still. Whereas I feel guilt pushes us to take action and better our wrongdoings. Shame oftentimes isn't even attached to something we necessarily did wrong. It could often be attached to something we believe Maybe somebody who's more manipulative made us feel like we did was wrong. I have actually have been battling with shame a lot recently. Well, and I would not say recently, I feel like it's been the past, wow, a long time. But when we feel a certain emotion and we feel embarrassed about feeling that emotion, that's shame. 
why are you seriously sad about that again so the second arrow which is something that I've heard a lot in Buddhism but recently I posted something on Instagram about shame someone who's so cool he dm me this article talking about the second arrow the second arrow is usually always shame feeling shame about an emotion you feel no what you feel is what you feel you can't deny your feelings you can't say you should feel this why are you feeling this oh my gosh this is the classic thing people say maybe what i said made you feel that way but that's not how i intended it I've done it my whole life where I feel a certain way and then I feel badly about feeling that way and that's when I think we get stuck and we can't move on and we can't process things because we're not letting ourselves feel that emotion fully and that's something that I never understood until recently I felt all these feelings from this past trauma why am I feeling this still, why are these still coming up? The very reason why I'm asking the why is the reason why these are still coming up because I'm still feeling shame and I'm coding all of these emotions and these feelings and this trauma with shame. That is what I think obstructs us from getting through things or being able to process things and that's why years later down the line, you're still upset about that same thing or you're still resentful, or you're still holding on to that. Um, anger in the minute that I'm able to just say this is this was hard for me I'm still going through this I'm still sad about this let me sit with the sadness and feel it fully to its fullest extent without letting shame in at all that's when I feel like I fully am able to let it kind of like move through my body head I do kind of like a quick like body scan head to toe I'm different than other people. I, I process things differently. I need to, you know, comb through specific situations that cause trauma for me. And that's gonna take work and a while. And I think people just try to move on really fast because they don't want to continue to sound like a broken record with their friends. It's important to, to normalize these things because this is why we feel so lonely and shameful. The shame comes from not hearing enough stories or not hearing, having enough examples or representation of people um, around our circles and on me in media talking about these things. If you're going through something or you're trying to get over somebody or you're grieving or you know, you're still upset about losing your job or a fight that you had with a friend, remember that the emotion that you're feeling about that specific situation you need to feel it to its fullest. You need to really sit there and journal and reflect on that emotion alone, taking away the component of shame because I think that is going to be your biggest obstacle in getting to a point where you can feel true inner peace, which is where I've been right now. It's like just accepting the way things are. I am just, this is the way I am and this is the way I I live and the way I love and the way I express I'm me and I don't have to compare myself to other people. Still working on that. The more people you talk to that have this similar experiences, the more you realize you're not alone. And again, we can normalize the conversation, normalize that things take a while to process. It's really beautiful when people are honest and open up. I'm just so proud of myself for being here today and talking about this and potentially posting it on the social media platforms. I need to get my baby's reaction when we're going outside.